I send my greetings into the void. I want to start out with a disclaimer that I don't know anything about video games and I have too many. In order to go through at least some of them before the heat death of the universe, I have run a random Steam game picker and we ended up on Eliza. So Eliza is a visual novel developed by Zachtronics, I think. Yes, visual novel developed by Zachtronics in August of 2019. Uh, I have to be really transparent here and you're probably seeing the continue sign here. I have already recorded chapter one of this game and in my infinite wisdom I managed to corrupt the recording. I don't know how but I'm not proud of myself. Uh, to spoil this experience for you a little bit, I had fun with chapter one. So I have decided to re-record it, maybe with a fresh take. I also want to give another disclaimer. For some reason, my microphone is picking up mouse clicks really well. Hopefully you'll consider it ASMR because my audio quality has uh, not improved since the last video that no one saw. So let's get into it. I'm going to go new game. Starting a new game will reset your progress and erase all save data, including all unlocked checkpoints. Do you want to continue? Yes. Let's continue. Chapter 1 of Eliza, a visual novel. I had a dream this morning, but I can't remember what it was. It all vanished when the alarm went off. First time that's happened in a while. I've been drifting away inside my own world for too long. It's time for me to wake up. What are you supposed to do on the light rail? I want to say, looking at this rail, it's much cleaner than what we have in my country. <laughs> so here, use your phone, I guess, or look around. Okay, so here's our phone where we can continue. We have three messages. Uh, before we check our messages, I want to check this out. I forgot how difficult getting around this city can be sometimes. Is she sleeping? I hope she doesn't miss her stop. And this lady must be commuting to work. Maybe it's her first day at a new job too. Okay, so we are going, we are Evelyn, we're going to the first day of our new job. Okay, and we're on the train. Seems unlikely. Okay, I don't think there's anything else to click. But we do have our phone with three notifications. And all of them are on Swift Mail. Okay, so this is the earliest one. Evelyn Ishino Aubrey. That's us. You will do it. I believe in you. I think we sent this to ourselves. And the next one, January 2nd. Proxy Coordination Center. Dear Evelyn. Congratulations, you're taking the first step on an exciting and rewarding career with the Skanda family. Please show up promptly for your orientation meeting at 9 a.m. Friday, January 3rd. We're looking forward to working with you. Okay, so we are proxy level one. I'm guessing that's our new job. Contingent staff, we're from Camps, Capstan, Eliza Counseling Center. Okay, first job, Eliza Counseling Center. Queen and we are going to be a proxy. And Avalon Fitness says, Evelyn, we want you back. Was it something we said? We've noticed you haven't checked into your customized personal training plan in 971. So I have a gym card that I picked up in June and I have never used it and I need it. Okay. Just to let you know, clicking on all of this gives me nothing so far. And I'm very excited about Solitaire. To give you a bit of a spoiler on my, the recording that I did that is now uh, corrupted, I played Solitaire and I played it very badly. And I'm happy that now maybe when I get to play Solitaire, uh, I will not have to, you know, submit anyone to any torture. Uh, like my original plan, you know, my original intent was for all of you to, to have watched me fumble through Solitaire. But I think I got through grasp of this game's new version of Solitaire. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's continue. 
Eliza, powered by scandal. It's so strange to see it like this. Oh, this is me. What should I be doing here? Should I check in at the front desk? Wait, there's the woman I met at the orientation meeting last week. Hi, you're Evelyn, right? So I just want to point something out, right? So Evelyn here, like, this is not an outfit that I would wear for my first day at work. And I have mad respect for Evelyn for showing up at work in a hoodie. Honestly, like, I, my, when I start a new job, this is my goal, right? And I have to work for at least two months to be able to achieve this level of casualness. This is my goal, right? To be able to come to work, like, straight out of bed, still in my pajamas. Just go, right? You remember me? That's impressive. There were a lot of people at that orientation. Of course. I've done this for a while now, so I'm pretty good at putting names to faces. People always say they're bad at it, but it's a skill you can practice just like any other. In case you forgot, though, I'm Ray. Hi, Ray. Come to me with all your questions, comments, complaints, whatever. And if you look around and can't find me, I'm probably at one of the other two counseling centers I'm running right now. So you can count on me being back soon. Three centers? Sounds like a lot of work. And Ray is managing all three of them, I guess. Oh, it is a lot of work. This is kind of a temporary thing. We're growing fast and hiring is one of our big challenges. That means there's decent opportunity for advancement here, if that's something you're looking to do. Yes, Ray, I'm coming for your job. Yeah, yeah, we're looking, you know, we're trying to make it big. Interesting. Shall we start with a quick tour of the office? Yes. Ray starts with a tastefully appointed lobby. There are a few people already waiting for their counseling sessions to you start. You could say the Queen Anne office is Eliza's flagship location. It has 12 individual counseling rooms. Currently, we're up to seeing almost 100 clients a day here. A hundred a day? That's so many. Mm -hmm. The growth trend isn't stopping either. Demand for Eliza keeps exceeding our expectations, especially here in Seattle, for whatever reason. We're already looking at adding more capacity here. Either that or opening another location close by. Personally, I think having a single office with 24 counseling rooms might seem a little unfriendly. So I hope we go for a second location. I like to think of Eliza centers like cafes or coffee shops. A few small ones is better than one big one. That's an interesting take. Um, I guess so. I guess so. Counseling centers like coffee shops odd metaphor and i personally agree ray leads me into one of the counseling rooms and here's where the magic happens in these little rooms you'll get your assignments from the eliza app on your phone oh one thing to note it's always a good idea to double check the headset to make sure it's working properly before you dive in we've had some quality control issues lately after that, all you need to do is initiate the session and follow the instructions. Make sense so far? Any questions for me? Honestly, this isn't, wasn't very detailed. Like, I'm hoping our girl Evelyn had, you know, actual training before she started the job, right? Like, headset app, you know, but I'm guessing they're keeping some mystery, right? And I'm going to say, I think I got it. I think I got it. Great. Before I go, just a few reminders of things we covered in orientation. Sure, let's do training now. No deviating from the script that Eliza gives you. Okay. No checking your smartphone or anything else that would take your attention away from the client during the session. Okay. I'll say I remember. I remember. Ray stops for a moment and looks me over. It looks like you're dressed acceptably as well. Nothing snazzy, but it'll do. You wouldn't believe the outfits some people come in here wearing. I respect you, Ray. Okay, let me double check to make sure you're all set up in the system. Ray takes out her phone and swipes a few times. Yep, looks like you're all good to go. Thank you, Ray. Okay, ready to start your first counseling session as an Eliza proxy? No. Sure. Sure. Don't worry, there's basically nothing you can do to mess it up. 
I doubt it. You just follow the prompts. It's a really impressive system. If you want, have a look around the counseling office first. Get comfortable. We'll do. I'll check in with you afterward. Okay. Eliza. There are dozens of these locations already. Skanda is putting some serious investment into this. The window. I hope spring comes soon. At least the days are getting longer now. And there's coffee. And now here's the thing. I love coffee so much. So imagine my surprise when I clicked on it and this happened. Do I want coffee? I think I'll skip it. Evelyn, who asked you? Okay. I got some texts. Eliza Proxy. Welcome. Rapidly growing counseling service, blah, blah, blah. Official with Eliza app. Sure, thank you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, my credentials, blah, blah, blah. Ed. I want to take a moment to remind all provider proxies, avoid deviating from the provider script. Continual violation will result in reprimand. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Just read the script. Just read the script. Let's continue. Time to get started. Yeah, let's do this. It really looks like a therapist's office in here. Yay, let's do this. Soft lighting, soothing air, art, soothing air, soothing art on the walls. Was this how I imagined it working? I can't remember anymore. The future happened without me. Loading. I hope there's no lag. Headset activates. A distant looking man shuffles into the room and sits down across from me. Hello, Darren. Oh, <laughs> hello, Darren. Hello, Darren. Hi. Okay, so here's what's happening here, right? Here we have some session, like phase introduction. We've begun session, we're in the phase introduction. And here we can see how distressed he is, what his heart rate is, his respiration, EPR effect, emotion, all of that, right? So we, so see, we are the proxy and Eliza analyzed his sad face and him saying hi. And Eliza gave us, you found the place okay? You found the place okay? Yeah. Hope you didn't get rained on too much. Hope you didn't get rained on too much. No, it was fine. It has been raining a lot, hasn't it? It's been raining a lot, hasn't it? It's supposed to clear up later today. Oh, um, that's good. Little sun once in a while. But... Let's get to the root of the problem. Darren, what brings you here today? Well, uh, I just feel empty inside. Like there was supposed to be something there, but it's missing. I, I go, I go to work. I, I do my work. I go home, but there's nothing there. I feel like I'm simulating a person. Like I, I feel like just hollow and. Like I'm not even alive. Darren, have we met? Like a ghost or something. How long have you felt this way? How long have you felt this way? For a long time. I mean, it comes and goes, but the last two weeks is when it really started to get bad. It just suddenly came over me the way, you know, the way things are going in this world. There's no future for humanity. There's no journey toward anything. We're being cruel to each other just to be cruel. The people who run things don't care about anything except themselves and you can't stop them. Everyone is driven by greed. Just greed. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to get rich. And we're all going to die because of it. So Darren here looks like a comrade to me. The damage we're doing to the planet is irreversible. We're destroying everything and we can't even manage to stop ourselves. So we give him the generic response. Do you remember anything in particular that caused these feelings? The state of the world is what's causing these feelings. I was on a walk the other day. I thought maybe I could clear my head. And all I could see was construction cranes and new development and oceans of money flowing in, distorting everything. Suddenly the whole city felt so, so damaged, so 
corrupted. I felt like I was an alien in a hostile world, a world that hated me. And we're building it. We're building this hell. We're choosing to build it right here. So, so what's the point? Probably overloaded your system with that, huh? Your machine learning or whatever it is you got going on in there. Super generic. I want to just point something out here, right? So here's a sentiment analyzer. So you'll notice with his sentences, right, that they're marked, you know, as negative or positive. And currently he's being very, very negative. So I'm thinking maybe this is connected. I wonder how decorative these are, you know, while I have been spoiled a bit, you know, these do still seem a bit decorative. So let's see. Let's focus on you for the moment. So here's what we want to know, right? We want to know, is he still providing his labor for others, right? Here he is, burdened by the state of the world. And all the, the most important thing is, uh, can you still, you know, work? So let's see what Darren has to say. Are these feelings you're experiencing affecting your ability to function at work? I haven't been doing a whole lot of work. I just don't understand why I should bother. Why anyone should bother. Nobody in management's noticed yet, but eventually someone will, and I'll get fired. And how does thinking about getting fired for that make you feel? Honestly, I feel good about it. They don't deserve me dragging them down. Everyone there is smart and motivated and has a wonderful, promising career. You have beautiful, successful people. See? Smart, motivated, wonderful, promising, beautiful. So now I wonder, has this changed? Because he had some good things to say, but to only not himself. New building, expensive area, fancy restaurants, you know, fancy bars. Everything is nice. Everything is nice and I feel terrible. You said you believe your co-workers are happy. I'm thinking Darren here has some serious FOMO, you know. Yeah, I mean, way more than I am, at least. They're all doing so much better than me. Why do you say that? Because they just aren't bothered by things the way I am. They see what's going on in the world and they just, they just share memes about it and laugh and go on doing their jobs. You know, Darren, maybe you should find some existentialist memes. The real horror of it doesn't get through to them. They still want to achieve their goals. They're still happy. Doubtful. They're getting promotions and falling in love and getting married and taking these wonderful trips to Japan or Sweden or wherever. Big mountains and expensive food on their timeline. I see. Would you be happy if you had big mountains, expensive food, <laughs> and timelines? Would you be happy if you had those things too? I don't know. I don't have them. I don't have anything to be happy about. Look, all I really want, all I want is to understand why. Why this is happening. Why I'm here. Now, we need to see if Eliza here has an answer for the meaning of life. I mean, there has to be a reason, right? Is there? Because otherwise, why do I, why do I exist? Why? This pain, this, uh, this one thing after another, and what's the point? The meaning of life. Do I have any cause to be hopeful about anything? Look at this world. It look, really, really look and tell me with a straight face that there is. Okay, Darren, let's try something. Imagine that things are better for you. What does that look like? What does that look like? I don't know. It looks like knowing that something matters at, at all. But nothing I do will matter. Nothing matters. Not against the face of human indifference. This, this absurdity. Are there any other things that come to mind? Like what? I wish I could talk to people. 
really talk to people, have some actual communication. Like right now, I wish I could talk to you, to you, you as a human being, but I can't. You're just following the script that's been given to you. You're not supposed to say anything on your own. Look, I know how this works. It's just a bunch of AI, machine learning, deep learning, whatever the fuck you're calling it now. Look, I'm desperate and I can't even talk to a real human being. Me calling customer support. How did it end up like this? <sighs> okay, so we're going to now offend him and tell him that he isn't speaking clearly. Please, try to stay focused. I can't help you if you aren't speaking clearly. I'd ask for a refund if I got this information. From like, see, what is our point, right? Like, just for a real quick second, let's consider... The point of our girl Evelyn sitting here and reading the script. Just so Darren here can feel like he's speaking to an actual human. But Darren knows that he isn't speaking to an actual human. So what's our point, you know? No, 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 no. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I, I shouldn't even have come. This is, this is making me worse. Why can't you just talk to me as you? You, the person sitting there. I don't want to talk to a machine. Sounded so sad when he said that. The person who's sitting in front of me, I want her to say something. I want that person to say something, please. Anything, anything, please, please. I kind of want to give him a hug now. Please. Yeah, and even more now. Okay. Hi, Darren. Is that, is that really you? <laughs> totally. <laughs> It's me. You're not following the script right now? Wait, say, so, say something weird. Say something only a human would say. You know, here's the thing. I used to work some call center jobs. Used to, maybe I still do, you know. <laughs> mystery, right? So, and, you know, after a while, right? After your 150th call in that day, day after day after day, right? You develop this almost robotic way of taking those calls like sure sure you need emotion you need emotion but kind of answering it you have this thing that you said so many times right and i would have people you know i'd answer the phone and people went are you a real person am i speaking to a robot are you a real human being so what, what do you say to them right so i would say things like pineapple or i would laugh and then you know they you can sense the relief you know and then they get someone that sounds almost robotic kind of, i like i understand that the, that sentiment you know but let's see what eliza has to respond to this darren i'm going to get in trouble if i deviate from eliza for too long Class. darren i'm going to get in trouble if i deviate from eliza for too long no i know i just My real name is Evelyn. Yeah. Well, it's uh, nice to meet you, Evelyn. I didn't expect you would actually do that. Do that for me. Okay, so let's fish. I'm not used to people doing things for me. I have a soft spot for this guy. You know, I, this is the second time I've been through this conversation. And, you know, I really want to give him a hug. Okay, Darren, I have some recommendations for you. Back to the script, dude. Darren, all you need to do is breathe properly. First, I'm going to send a set of breathing exercises for you to do. That's it. All you need to do is properly breathe. <laughs> That's it. When things start feeling like too much, when the existentialist crisis hits, when you realize you're just in a rock, floating in space, and we're all going to become space dust. Breathe a little. Use them when things start to feel like too much. And download our app. You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. And of course, take some drugs. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about anexophen. So Eliza here, and I found this really interesting, right? So Eliza 
has the ability to, to analyze your ailment, right? And recommend a drug that would fit that ailment. Now, is Eliza perhaps prone to advertising? Let's say you're a pharmacy, a pharmaceutical company. Can you pay Conda to put your drug in Eliza over a competitor? Because it's not like there's a choice. I'm going to read out an exophin for this guy, right? Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Evelyn. Evelyn, Evelyn, Evelyn. It's <laughs> a nice name. Now, don't remember Evelyn. Remember Anexapin. We're trying to get um, paid here, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I... Thank you. Please confirm that you understand the recommendations. Yes, yes, I, I, I did. Thank you. Okay, for real, and to say it again, I do have a soft spot for Darren here. I enjoy his thinking, and I sympathize, and I think a lot of us do, especially, you know, the younger people. Well, I'm not really, you know, a teenager. I haven't been for a while. I think younger generation, especially ones that have entered the workforce, can sympathize with Darren and his existential thinking when, you know, faced with the consequences of unchecked capitalism. <laughs> what did I say? Anyway, my hopes, so not to spoil anything, right? I hope he comes back, right? I hope he does a follow-up. I hope we, you know, check up on him. Uh, so I'm actually really curious on what was going to happen with, with Darren here. Thank you, Darren. We hope to see you back soon. Yeah, I will. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I will. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. I should have totally used my customer service voice when doing the, these things. Bye. Maybe on the next one. Just for fun, you know? <laughs> Because you do develop a customer service voice after a while. Okay, here's where we're getting graded. I leveled up. We're level two now. Uh, Darren here didn't give us a rating. And Darren here didn't give us a tip, even though we told him our first name. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really sure what this means. I'm going to take a better look. Uh, supposedly you see that in your Eliza app. So we're going to have a closer look into this a bit later. But let's see what uh, Ray has to say about this. Wow. Uh, that was intense. Evelyn, I agree. Darren here had a bit of a moment. Hey, how'd it go? You were a bit too perky for what I just witnessed. I, I don't know. Why? What happened? Uh, hold on, I can check the log. Ray takes her phone out of her pocket again. You're going to listen to the session? Is that okay? Oh yeah, I have privacy clearance. In Europe, we have GDPR. <laughs> Just saying. This is still a new service, so we need to be able to monitor sessions for a variety of reasons. There could be bugs in the software we need to examine more closely. We're pretty upfront about all this. Ray stares at her phone and watches for a while. Mm. <laughs> One of these guys. Yeah, we get people in who demand to speak to a real human being. It happens often enough that we made Eliza capable of handling it with a special script. It's nice to know things are working as designed. Huh, that's a pretty sleek feature. I wouldn't have thought to create something like that. I mean, that's a pretty big oversight, Evelyn. Do you think that guy will be okay? He seemed pretty unhappy. Who knows? Hopefully he gets his prescription and takes his meds and answers our follow-up reminders, but... It's tough. We can't make them take their meds or come in when they're supposed to. All we can do is suggest those things, tell them they really ought to be doing it. Ultimately, they're the ones who have to decide to follow the plan. It's kind of a shame. I, uh, I wish we had more leverage. So what I'm wondering here, right? So this is a business relying on people getting therapy, right? So if you manage to get people to take their therapy, 
take their medic medication, go to their session, and then get better, you lose the client, right? But, you know, you, you might think, oh, what about a doctor? But this is, you know, this is a very private company, you know? So, I don't know. What We'd help way more people if we could track their compliance. I really don't like the ominous way the word compliance is just situated here. I just... But that's probably too much to ask for at this point. I think he might have needed way more help than Eliza can give. Is there anything like referring clients to other forms of care? Good question. Ray looks a little surprised. Well, there is a disclaimer before every session saying if your problems are really serious, we aren't qualified to address them. But what qualifies as a serious problem, you know, Ray? Where, where is that in the disclaimer? So this is also a very interesting point, right? I think an external care referral feature was on our development roadmap at some point. Where is it? Um, I'm not sure what happened with that, actually. Huh, maybe I'll ask Ed next time I see him. Please do. Okay, so I'm not going to say this, right? Because this just looks noobish, right? I'm going to say, I see why a lot of proxies are tempted to go off script. You know, like those other ones and ask me, you know, just nudge her in that bit. Pretend we're cool. You know, play the office games. I see why a lot of proxies are tempted to go off script. Yeah, I totally know how it feels. A really intense client like that can be intimidating and you're motivated to help them. But to succeed as a proxy, you really need to let go and let Eliza do its thing. I know that not having any choice feels weird, but sometimes life is like that. Sometimes you don't have any choices and you just have to follow directions. Most jobs are like that, honestly. I mean, you're right, unfortunately. That's just how it works. Okay, it just sounded like... He sounded like he could use more help. Like, maybe right away. Believe me, I understand. I've been a proxy plenty of times myself. When people get emotional, it's hard not to feel for them really strongly. But that's exactly why Eliza works. It evaluates from a more distant perspective, a neutral perspective. Besides, if proxies started offering their own opinions, well, that'd just be a big mess. Not to mention there'd be all kinds of problems with liability. Oh, I don't want problems with liability. Still, I get it. I really do. That was definitely more intense than the average session. Why don't you take a few minutes to center yourself again? Have some tea or coffee and take a few deep breaths. No rush, okay? So you might think that now we'll get to drink some coffee, but we won't. Thank you, Ray. We're going to be nice. Okay. Thanks, Ray. That was a lot. I definitely need a moment. Grow me too. Dot, dot, dot. Nora. Hey. Hi, Nora. How you been? I could be better, you know. Ah. I started a new job. Oh yeah, it's good. You found work again. What's the work? Okay, so I'm going to be super honest with you, right? When I recorded this the first time, I was under the impression that Nora here is our cat. And I thought, how weird of a choice to, in this, you know, visual novel about, you know, Pretend, you know, AI counseling. Cats can speak. What's the work? Ah, it's just a job. How about you? She's doing quite well, and she has something to tell me about. It may be sudden, but can you meet up after work today? It would be good to talk to you face to face. You know what? Yes. I need a coffee. This machine here doesn't work. So let's go. Great. Also, you should come to my show. I'll send you a flyer. Yeah, I'll come to your show, my cat. I didn't realize you're playing shows now. I, you know... Uh, spoiler, she is uh, not my cat, right? And so she has thumbs and is playing shows. That's why you should come. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a few minutes to come down like Ray suggested. Maybe I could play some solitaire. 
Maybe I could. Please stop, okay? Okay, let's see what's new. I hope the next client is a little easier to handle. This job might be difficult in a way I wasn't expecting. Plants are nice. I should get plants, I think. I don't know why I never did. Afraid of neglecting them, maybe. Okay, so every single plant I ever owned is extremely dead. Or has been for a very long time. I've never managed to keep a plant alive. Eliza said the weather would clear up later today. Hopefully it happens before the sun goes down. And see, here's the thing that creeped me out, right? Eliza said that the weather will get better. Is, does Eliza have, you know, like a built-in weather function, right? So you go to your therapist, you come to therapy, and you ask the chatbot about your depression, and you're like, hmm, I have a picnic tomorrow. Can you please check what the weather is going to be like tomorrow? No, not continue. No, 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 no. Let's see what we can do. Think back to what brought you here. I don't know yet. Good article. Okay. So Ray gives me a nice article about our efforts from a year and a few months ago. It's a little outdated by now, but still relevant. I got a little cameo in it. It's kind of poised to capture growing demand for mental health services. So this is like a generic article about how uh, see Eliza can evaluate users of mental health with their problems and make recommendations. This is Livia giving her, you know, a rating review. And you know, Ray says an obvious chat box recommending a course of action is one thing. A real human being looking you in the eye and telling you the same thing is another. There's more immediacy there, more sincerity. Like I like I understand, but also it's the same thing. Like literally it's the same thing. Only you're looking into another person's eyes. It's a chatbot with eyes. <sighs> okay, so and also there was a study by the National Institute for Productivity. 43% of the nation's workforce reported feelings of anxiety or depression strong enough to interfere with their day-to-day -day performance. Same thing that we spoke about with Darren. Is this interfering with your work? Okay. Whatever. Sessions. Okay, we can click on, can we click on Darren? No, but we do have like achievements. Completed, new client, beginner proxy, sympathetic, proxy level two. We don't have a rating yet. Sessions, Darren. So I'm guessing here we see a little bit about a session. Who, who was it that they give us a rating? And here's our profile and we can check if we got any. Achievement. Sympathetic counsel someone with a mood rating of five or, or below. Okay. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. We have some mail. Nora sent us an invite on January 17th to, to go and watch Masic, Little Sappho, and Clone World featuring KO. Um, I'm not sure which one's Nora, and I really hope she's Little Sappho because I love that name. <laughs> if it's not, already an artist's name they need to get on it right now and i'm really hoping that uh, azactronics hasn't copyrighted little sappho i mean i need to google it maybe maybe a little sappho exists in case I iconic okay damien seabrook memorial fund dear friends and family of damien seabrook it has been a little over three years since damien's tragic passing we are grateful for your contributions in Damien's memory, which continue to go towards the causes he worked so hard for in his life. This year, the Damien Seabrook Memorial Fund is supporting the following organizations. The Greenhouse, a non-profit, non-denominational organization dedicated to ensuring that developments in the mental health field are distributed equitably and that all those who are in need get access to modern treatment. Tech Workers Together advocates for better working conditions across the tech industry, organizing employees, for better working conditions, providing education around the industry-wide problems of crunch, overwork, and burnout, and the Humanitarian Software Foundation. Humanitarian Software Foundation, development of free open source software for therapeutic or curative purposes. Okay, so Damien was someone obviously near and dear to our heart that died three years ago, and I'm pretty certain that this becomes significant a bit later on. And see, 
why why I try to read this out for you is because I'm thinking, you know, industries that Damien is donating to are in quite contrast to how we live our life now, right? I'm thinking all of these are somehow related to us and to our well-being as well. Rest in peace, <laughs> Damien. So let, let's see. We're going to we're going to find out later, I think. Okay, it says time for the next session. However, I think I'm going to end this here. I think I'm thinking next session and the coffee we're having with our friend cat Nora. I'm thinking if if you like this, if you're interested in finding out more about this world, let me know. Like, subscribe. I'm pretty certain that I'm going to record this at least until at the end of chapter one. And then hopefully chapter two, right? So yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to continue this. You know, our first session is over. Is the next session going to be a bit better? What does Nora have to say to us? Will we go and see little Sappho? Uh, so I'm hoping if you, if you want to see more, uh, let me know. And we'll hang out with Evelyn and on her new job. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. And um, I'll see you in the other half of chapter one. Bye.